Okay, in this video, we're going to look at a couple of different ways to find a parasitic capacitance of a, of a transistor, for instance, in a power transistor cell. All right, so here we have a power transistor cell. It's a cascode cell. We have stacked transistors, and we have a basic bias uh, and driver circuit, which is just uh, a V sign. We have a choke conductor feeding the top transistor in the cascode. And we have a blocking capacitor to keep DC from going towards the output port. All right, so let's look at a couple of different methods to simulate this and find the capacitances that we might be interested in. We're going to focus on the drain capacitance of this transistor, but the methods that we use will generally be usable also to find if we wanted to the gate capacitance at the input, for instance. So I've created a Maestro view and I have a DC simulation. And that's the first thing that we're going to use to try and find the capacitance. Now in the DC simulation, I've set it up so that we have save DC operating point and in this case, I was going to sweep the drain to source voltage, but let's just keep it constant because that doesn't really matter in terms of figuring out how to extract the capacitance. All right, at this point, we're good to go. We can run our simulation. This might take a moment or two, but it's a relatively simple simulation, so it should run pretty quickly. All right, we can see that it's complete. So now we're going to go to Tools. Calculator. I'm going to select on the calculator op, and it's going to act, ask me to select an instance, and I want to select the the, the top transistor here in one, and then it's going to give me a list of parameters to look for, and I can find any DC bias parameter in this list and select it. Uh, I'm looking for the total drain capacitance, uh, which I'm going to choose as CDD. Now, it's important to note that CDD is not the actual drain capacitance. It's the charge derivative at the drain node with respect to the drain voltage. But it's an approximation of the total capacitance seen at the drain node. I can either add this as an output or just go ahead and evaluate it. Here, I evaluate it, and you can see that it's about 25 femtofarads. All right, so there's one method to find the total capacitance of a transistor. Now, you might notice this list includes a lot of other things. So I could find the gate to drain capacitance, uh, for instance, or I could find the gate to source capacitance, or any other capacitance, or the total gate capacitance using this method. or any of the other parameters for that matter. Okay, in our next method, we're going to use S parameters to find the drain capacitance. So I'm gonna set up an S parameter simulation. I'm going to go in and select my port. And I'm going to simulate this across a frequency range. Now the frequency range should be relevant to the one that you're going to be simulating in. Here, I'm gonna simulate say, from one gigahertz to five gigahertz. And I can leave almost everything else there as default. 
All right. Now I'm going to disable the DC simulation and just run the S parameter simulation. Again, this might take a moment for it to start. All right, started and ran. Now let's go to results. Direct plot, main form. And I'm going to plot the Y parameters, the imaginary part of Y11. In this case, I have a one port simulation just going to the drain of the transistor. And the imaginary part of Y11 is the susceptance. Now, I'm going to use a calculator by going to Tools, Calculator. I'm going to select the wave. I'm going to select that waveform. Then I'm going to go to File, Reset GUI, and I close the stack here. And I'm going to select XVAL of the waveform. This is going to give me the frequency. I'm going to multiply this by 2 times pi. And I'm going to take the original equation and divide by that whole quantity. So here I have an expression that's the susceptance divided by the frequency, which would be the capacitance. Now again, I can add this to the outputs or I can just go ahead and plot it. I'm going to add a new sub window. And I'm going to move, oops, let me close the calculator since it was grabbing the waveform. I'm going to move this, and now you can see the total capacitance. Now, one thing that you might immediately think is, well, why is the capacitance versus frequency changing? And part of the issue may be that we've probably not chosen very good values for the blocking capacitor and show conductor. All right, here we've gone in and made the show conductor bigger and the blocking capacitor bigger to absurd limits so that even at low frequencies, this is a very high impedance and a very low impedance with respect to the inductor and capacitor. And I've rerun the simulation and you can see now that Y11 is increasing linearly as a function of frequency, which is what you would expect. It's always positive, which means it's always capacitive. It means that that inductor is no longer playing any kind of role. And it has a value of something on the order of 67 femtofarads. Now you can see this is quite different than the DC simulation. And uh, one of the important uh, things to think is that, well, the DC simulation gave us a figure that is in the ballpark, meaning that it was only a factor of two off, uh, or almost three off from the actual value. But nonetheless, the actual value from the S parameter simulation, probably a bit more realistic. Now we have one more thing that we can do, and that is a large signal S parameter. Let's go in and figure out how to set that up. All right, so remember, we have an input source that is that has maybe a DC bias, uh, and we have added a DC voltage, VG, a variable. Uh, we'll set that in a moment. And then a frequency and an amplitude for the AC signal. Now here, let's go ahead and set the gate voltage at something reasonable for the transistor we're using. Maybe say half a volt. 
we have the RF set at 5.6 gigahertz with a voltage amplitude of about 0.1 volts. Let's go ahead and make sure that we're driving this thing pretty well. Let's set the amplitude at about 0.4 volts to get full swing out of this thing. Now we'll go in and we're going to set up a PSS simulation. We're going to auto calculate the frequency. You can give it a number of harmonics to look at. I like to default to 10 and depending on whether I'm doing something that has a lot of harmonics or not, change that as needed. I'm going to let it detect the steady state after running a transient. And that should be good. I'm going to click apply. All right, now we're going to set up a PSP simulation, which is an S parameter simulation that we run around the large signal bias point changes that might be expected due to the PSS simulation. Here we're gonna do a relative simulation relative to the frequency of the ports. I'm going to select the port. We can choose a harmonic. And we'll add it. All right. Oh, we don't want to do noise on this. So I'm going to unclick that and click OK. All right, there we go. So we have a PSS and a PSP set to run. And I'm going to go ahead and run those. All right, our simulations run now. So we're going to go back in, go to outputs, or sorry, results. Direct plot, main form. And now we're going to go to the PSP. And I'm going to plot the Y parameters. Imaginary part, Y11. Now, right around the center frequency, uh, uh, we might see a perturbance in the Y parameters. But nonetheless, the, the uh, actual value away from the perturbance frequency. And again, remember, we did a relative sweep uh, here. So the, perturb uh, the perturbation frequency is at 0 gigahertz, representing 2.5 gigahertz, actually. So we're going to see that we have our Y parameters. Let's go ahead and do, go to tools, calculator. We're gonna grab that Y parameter. I'm going to go ahead and copy it. I'm gonna take the X valve. I'm going to multiply by 2 times pi. And I'm going to plot the waveform. You go ahead and close this.
And here we can see the capacitance that we found from the PSP simulation. Now remember, we found something like 67 femtofarads with the small signal simulation, and we're seeing something like 67 femto or 70 femtofarads from the large signal simulation. So these are pretty close. This one is capturing any change in the capacitance due to changes in the bias point because of a large signal swing. So that was three different ways to find the find a capacitance. Now we'll note that we could move the port to the gate and find the gate capacitance if we were interested, or we could find the capacitance at any other interstage node, provided that we blocked the port uh, from the DC bias and uh, set and made sure that the impedances that we were using to block it with were sufficiently uh, high or low such that they weren't loading anything. All right, so with that, we'll go ahead and stop. We now know how to find a capacitance using a DC simulation, an S-parameter simulation, or a PSP large signal S-parameter simulation.